In this video, we are showing step by step approach to a severe grade gynecomasia. So this is mainly for the plastic surgeons, young plastic surgeons who want who are not exposed to the liposuction and like not exposed to the much of the gynecomasia surgeries. This video is going to be a really useful one. In this technique, we are giving yeah, very good results consistently in the last 5-6 years and especially for the grade 3 and grade 4 kind of measures. If you are a patient, eat, please uh, do understand this a lot of technical steps are involved, a lot of surgical steps are uh, shown. So if you are not comfortable, please don't watch the video. And uh, uh, same way, don't go and argue with your plastic surgeon to do this technique because each plastic surgeon has their own methods to get a good results. So this is what we are following, doesn't mean that this is the only technique available to get a good sense. So this video is going to be the very useful one for you and uh, if you have any queries, please don't hesitate to ask us. This is a grade 4 gynecomasia. Actually, if you see the distance between the lower water of the muscle and the areola is that almost 5 cm, the nipple is almost 5 cm. So when they stand, you know, like it looks like a very saggy uh, uh, breast. So what we are doing is we are using, making a small lick in the armpit region. If you see here, the, when you are keeping the arm by the side, if you can see a small fold form there. We mark the fold preoperatively. We make a very small cut, uh, maybe a 3 to 4 millimeter cut to uh, do our infiltration and do our liposuction procedures. So the incision uh, is made and this is a 3 millimeter infiltration cannula. You can see here it's a 3 millimeter infiltration cannula and uh, this is the commonest mistake people do here when you introduce you have to go a little superficially in the muscle plane some people enter deep into the muscle and they infiltrate everything underneath uh, so when you're crossing the uh, the muscle border you have to be careful you don't enter deep inside uh, the muscles so so this is the uh, infiltration of the tumors and fluid uh, we use the high uh, power infiltration machines and so that our uh, time will be you know like shortened because uh, there is the infiltration takes a lot of time in fact we we infiltrate a lot of uh, fluid so that our liposuction will be bloodless and you know like uh, it's uh, easy to remove the fat this is a trocar what we use uh, for a bit before the vaser so to to fix the our uh, the guard uh, in that in, uh, the incision site so we are fixing the guard there this will reduce the burns around the incision site uh, in the vaser as well as in the micro air this is the tumorcent anesthesia solution whatever we mix it is there in the chart instead of uh, sensorkin we are using the rupiwakin nowadays so, so if you see here we are infiltrated almost 3 liters in the right side itself so this is the vaser tip we use the three grooves uh, at, the, at the probe so that our skin retraction will be much better here. So initially uh, when you start the vaser, uh, vaser has to be done superficial first and then deep. Well, why um, most of the people ask why it is because most of the time when you finish uh, you know like vacuizing the uh, vaserizing the superficial area the sounds you know like sound waves when you are going to the deeper area then only the sound waves will be uh, heard. So finish the superficial uh, area, then it, uh, that area will be you know, like little loose. We are going deep, then only that uh, sound waves will be uh, heard uh, clearly so that we know whether we are doing vaser or not. So here the sides we have to do completely, uh, uh, superficial as well as the deep. In the gland area, the vaser doesn't work much, so don't waste your time much in the, the glandular area. The medial side, we have to consider that as a Pedicle because it's a very long uh, gynecomasia. You know that that medial area you should not do the superficial uh, vaser because we want the blood vessels to be uh, you know like intact. Not not only the vaser, the even the liposuction. You should not do it in the the pedicle area. Like we consider it as a superior medial pedicle, we keep that blood supply intact in those areas. So now we are starting our uh, liposuction using the micro air. It's a four mm cannula, power assisted cannula. You see here, I'm just keeping the hand, I'm not giving the pressure. I want only the deep fat liposuction in the medial area. Medial means uh, inside of the areola region because blood supply comes from the region. I only want to do a deeper liposuction. So you can see a clear fat 
flowing through the tubes and going into the container container jar So that is a three and a half liters bottle actually. Most of the time, some bigger cases, we, even three, three and a half liters will come in the gynecomysia itself. So now we finish the deeper liposuction in this region and we remove the superficial in deep below the, uh, uh, the pedicle area. And the sides, we completely remove superficial and deep. We want to give the definition to the muscle borders. So here below the gland, we do little liposuction so that our gland excision will be easier. Here and all you can remove completely superficial and deep. This is below the areola region. As I said earlier, here superficial and deep. See, a lot of times we miss the deep facet in the side of the chest. Uh, we do liposuction. Sometimes we feel that, you know, like still the bulge is there because the deep fat is in the especially the males that one fascia will be tough in the uh, deep above the just deep deep fascia very deep fat so we have to pierce the fascia to reach the deep fat in the side of the chest so it will be a little tricky go slow and go closer to the rib cage and now you can see completely removed the uh, fat everywhere there we kept the volume there we kept the volume because this is over the muscle we want to retain the muscle the bulk in the muscle Now we made the cut, we are releasing the, if you see the cut, it will be less than one fourth of the circumference of the areola. We can say one fourth because I made a little bigger in this case because it's a huge gland. Now we are dissecting the uh, gland completely from the skin. So we are not leaving any, any kind of a remnant of the gland or the fat. We just want to completely remove in this region. So first step is releasing the skin from the gland that's what we are doing usually a lot of times they miss the gland in this region so uh, removal will be a little difficult so the same way we are releasing all around once it is done we'll take the alleys alleys and we hold the gland tightly so the releasing is very important so only I'm taking a lot of times otherwise you 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 miss a lot of uh, gland uh, edges with, with which attached with the skin so take time to release it nicely then as I said earlier uh, see here everything everywhere it is released completely Now Alice was introduced and firmly hold the gland. Sometimes it will tend to slip. If it is a gland, it definitely it holds. So give a firm pull over that gland and introduce your scissors. Because of the pull, you won't you know, like injure the muscle. So when you keep going inside, there is a plane created below the gland. There you, you know, like then you create the plane by using the scissors and that is the plane between the muscle and the gland. So you won't injure a muscle that easily. So it's a little blind step, but you know, like that plane will be open up easily. So now I'm boldly going and releasing uh, the plane everywhere below the gland. Sometimes still some skin attachment might be left behind. So you have to release the skin attachments here and there. So if it's a big gland, don't, don't try to remove the gland as a, a one big mass. You can do it piecemeal, nothing wrong. Because if you wanting to pull the whole gland completely through the small cut, you might tear the skin cut uh, area. So sometimes you may need to divide the gland in the middle. So we have to, you know, you, you know like remove it as a two, three uh, pieces. So much of gland, no? So that, that area leave a little bit of uh, tissues otherwise because the, a lot of uh, times the crater deformity happens because you go up to the muscle border maybe a, 
uh, one centimeter below the muscle border you stop your uh, res uh, resection and you know like end of the whole surgery probably you can adjust but uh, initially you wait uh, and we leave uh, once you know, like from the muscle border leave one centimeter of the tissues then you readjust it otherwise greater deformity might be happening sometimes if you re uh, do remove more don't worry you you make the fat into multiple small pieces and fill it immediately nothing wrong it will take very well so this, as i said i am doing it in two three uh, you know like uh, uh, pieces not a single mass i removed it i removed the most of the things in one 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 go and now the remaining infer inferior to the uh, areola and the sides i am removing the uh, fat and the gland separately otherwise sometimes you tap the skin margins see less than one fourth circumference of the uh, areola only we use the cut now i am adjusting a little bit here and there so that now i am removing the gland a little more in the medial side never injure a muscle when you injure a muscle only the bleeding will happen and bleeding you know like it won't stop you you need to burn a lot so end up in you know like a lot of pain post operatively so <clears throat> now most of the glands are removed might might be a mild readjustments needed as i said no the the where the muscle curves that area if you are not removing the fat that the muscle border definition won't be achievable so here you easily injure the muscle make sure that now you it, you know like under vision you can do that so we see the muscle and dissect a layer between the muscle and the fat and the gland element in the side and uh, then you boldly cut and remove it so you won't injure the muscle but after the removal only you can see the where the muscle curves you can see that uh, uh, border clearly till you know like we are happy we never uh, uh, leave a small bit of fat because we want to achieve a very good result in each and every patient so we remove we, we remove a little bit little and see that uh, how it looks and you know, like uh, then only we move further now i am going to the area just below the border where i want you to keep something and you know like readjust later i am just trying to readjust now completely i removed the uh, gland and fat there and little bit i i, I left the over the muscle as well as uh, just above the area i leave a little bit of uh, fat elements sometimes the gland will extend above the muscle layer that you remove the gland completely then you can fill it with a little fat that doesn't matter but don't leave any gland and come now hemostasis are achieved this is a very small cut you can see only 4 mm cut there and less than half circumference or uh, one fourth of the circumference uh, cut in the areola region so are all the bleeding points and then we have to close the wound see that in the grade 3 and grade 4 leave a thin layer of gland so that the areola won't uh, shrink and create a, a kind of a deformities now we sutured the wound inside we sutured here we made the two 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 sutures in the area where introduce the cannula so see the thickness there keep the thickness more the pedicle cut off now we are going to use the plasters lifting plasters because this is a grade 3 grade 4 gynecomastial that sagging is more cover that uh, sutured area with the sterile plasters
so all the areas are covered wherever we sutured we covered with a sterile suture sterile plasters first which is very hypoallergic and uh, uh, water resistant plasters in fact people usually i ask them to take shower from second day onwards in normal second grade one grade two kind of commission with the plaster on but uh, this grade since you are going to put a lifting plaster they can't take shower for a uh, seven days so this is the me the supero medial lifting plaster actually this has to go towards inside and upward so first stick the half of the plaster then pull it and stick it over the chest now comes the superior lifting plaster that is lifts upward same we don't stick over the areola stick around the areola and stick the first half of the plaster then pull it nicely and anchor it over the shoulder side of the neck once you have done this side when you are doing in other side you have to make sure that that also in the same level the, the biggest mistake is if that uh, the areola is in a different level then difficult to correct post operatively so make sure that you are keeping it in the same level and in fact sometimes we see it in the immediate post op in making the patient sit that time if you feel that area on different level try to adjust the plaster again don't hesitate to do that otherwise it will stuck in the abnormal position the same way the superior medial lifting plaster and superior lifting plasters are applied some people you see the lot of loose skin uh, since glandular element will be more in the inferior aspect of the areola so sometime we put the plaster even below that so that 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 uh, loose skin also get adjusted nicely but in this case not so now the garments are applied on table we want to give the uh, patient you know like no pain uh, during and after surgery so we, when the patient is still mild drowsy we want to finish this uh, uh the garment uh, application otherwise patient should not feel any discomfort or pain uh, once he recovered fully so guys are really good they they do it every day at least two three cases they do the same work and now the garment uh, they are going to tighten the garment they are going to put the hooks on see if your garment is not tight and a patient might tend to get the seromas or uh, you know like the compression is not adequate small uh, bleeders might open up so make sure that your garment is tight always uh, you need to have some different sizes uh, at, at your place so that even one place is not uh, uh the not you know like it's big we have to go to the smaller size so usually our guys uh, go with the measurements uh, pre operative measurements so we take a lot of pre operative measurements accordingly they select the garment size so that's a routine for our technicians to do that work so no now the garment is applied and the patient is about to shift to the room the patient will be there in the post operative period for 4 uh, hours after 4 hours they'll be discharged and uh, they last few we ask them to come after a week for the plaster removal as well as we want to inspect how the wounds are and we remove the sutures also after a week uh, especially the severe grade gynecomastia when we are applying the plasters we want them to come back and show us so hope this video is is useful to you people any doubts don't hesitate to ask me in the comments